This is going to be a brief overview of the integratory system, and even though you may not know initially what that means by looking at the picture here, you can probably guess we're going to be dealing something to do with our own skin. So starting with the basics, uh, integrate actually means skin, and skin and its appendages make up the integratory system. That's why it's a system. So we're not just talking about skin, so with the appendages, such as nails and hair, and there'll be future videos on that. Skin is a cut um, cutaneous membrane that and is our largest organ. Our skin alone accounts for about 7% of our body weight. So kind of important to keep this in mind that this is covering our entire body. It makes up 7% of our body weight. So for every 100 pounds, you have about 7 pounds of just skin weight. We're going to be talking about the dermis and the epidermis, and this cutaneous membrane is a combination of both of those. In this system I'm talking about, remember we're also involving nails and also hair. So regions of the skin. So just to go over a couple, two distinct regions. We have the epidermis, epi meaning top, and then the dermis being the low, lower level. But the lowest level here is the subcutaneous level or the hypodermis. This is a fatty layer and it lies deep within the layers of the skin. So it's important to keep in mind, the first two distinctive regions are the epidermis, and that's the layer that you can physically see, and then you have the dermis below that, and then the subcutaneous or the hypodermis, and they're kind of used interchangeably um, lying beneath that. And it tends to be fatty, meaning it contains adipose tissue. So some of the functions of the skin, there's a couple major ones. Uh, protection, cushions, insulates, and acts as a waterproofing, protects the skin from chemicals, heat, cold, bacteria, and screens UV light, ultraviolet light. You can think of it like a spacesuit as offering protection from us from the harsh outside environment. Synthesizes vitamin D with UV light, so it puts together uh, vitamin D, it uses sunlight to help assemble that necessary vitamin. Regulates body heat, uh, it helps with the adipose tissue. Prevents unnecessary water loss, and contains sensory receptor or nerve endings involved in the um, integumentary system. So there's a couple major functions here of the skin. Moving on with a nice picture of the integument system and its components, you're going to see this image quite a bit. While initially, right now, some of these terms may sound a little bit unfamiliar, hopefully by the end of this uh, lecture series, a lot of these will make sense, and you'll be able to identify where they're located, and also their important function for the body. So the epidermis, remember, this is the most top layer. Um, it's stratified squamous epithelium. That's just the type of cells, is what it looks like. There's several distinct layers, and there's two different types of skin. There's what we call thick skin, which is five layers and found on the palms of your hand and soles of your feet, and then thin skin, which is four layers and basically covers the rest of your body. Thin skin also is where hair follicles are located. Thick skin is five layers and does not contain hair follicles. To give you just a quick comparison of thin versus thick skin, we can see the epidermis here, thickness on the thin skin, and where the th skin is thicker, you can see the epidermal layer being much larger, much thicker in um, that region. So skin contains four basic types of tissues, epithelium, connective tissue, which is part of the dermis, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. So right now, I'm just going to kind of go over those basic um, tissue types. There'll be other videos uh, that go through and discuss the muscle system, um, muscular system, and the nervous system. But right now, just know it's made of these four basic types of tissue. The dermal layer. So we're getting a little deeper into the skin now. This is the second major layer, strong flexural tissue, often referred to as the hide. So you can see the animal hide here. This is made up of mostly the dermal layer. Rich supply of nerves and the uh, vesicles here. Critical role in temp temperature regulation. And this has two layers. It's the papillary layer, which involves the dermal papillae, and the rectal layer which is a deeper layer and composes about 80% of the thickness of the actual dermis. Uh, flexure lines are creases in the palms. So I don't write, can read palms. I don't know, maybe you can tell me my future there. Uh, but this is looking at the dermal layer. This is what's giving the actual ridges to the palm. Continuing on, again, a little deeper here to the subcutaneous layer or hypodermis. Uh, these terms are kind of used interchangeably. You can see here um, hypodermis is actually um, Greek for below skin, and subcutaneous is actually Latin for below skin. So they both translate to the same, just to, again, no one is really preferred over the other. Be able to recognize both. This is it composed of loose connective tissue? Adipose is an example. Stabilizes the skin uh, position, loosely attached to the dermal and muscle tissue. So again, we're down here in the lower region. This is kind of tying this in 
uh, this upper epidermis and dermal layers, um, and also containing our veins and arteries and some of our nerve endings. In this uh, subcutaneous layer, hypodermis contains fat cells. Different patterns of accumulation based on male or female for those fat deposits provides thermal insulation, that's what adipose tissue is really great about, and cushions underlying organs, another important function. You can remember the hypodermis reserves hypodermic needles. So when you get a needle or an injection, it's being injected down into this hypodermal layer. Again, we've seen this picture before. Hopefully now we're starting to put together a couple pieces. In other videos, you'll notice where some of these other terms are also mentioned. So if this entire image does not make sense to you now, hopefully we're starting to put pieces and bits together. As far as kind of key items, you should know, at least from this lecture, looking at what's be able to identify the epidermis, the dermis, um, the hypodermis, and some of the other regions will become in the future there.